Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. So glad you've joined us this morning. Let's pray before I share with you. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can be in church today. Lord, I thank you for each of these children who are here in person and those watching online. Pray that you would be very close to each one of them. Pray that you would teach us now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want one of you to read a verse for me. Okay, good. Can you read Psalm 46, verse 1? God is very re refuge and strength, a very pre present help in trouble. Bef Just that far. Thank you so much. So God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Okay, so that's what I'm going to preach on today as well. Now, what is a refuge? Who knows what a refuge is? Yes? It's something. It's something? It's like a safe place where when you're in danger, you can run to this place. And you can hide and be safe. Thank you, <laughs> Uncle Alfonso. So it's a place you can run to and be safe. Now, how many of you have ever been caught in a storm before? Okay, what did you do? You went inside the house? Okay, that was a good decision to make. So the house was like a refuge. It was like a place of safety to run to. Now, who is afraid of lightning? I, I must admit, I don't like lightning. If you're in the pool, you're afraid of lightning. You also. Now, I remember in 2001, no, 2002, um, now, most of my life had been in the Western Cape, and then I was in Natal for a while at Abundant Life, and we were on this hike, and I was not, I was not used to the lightning that you can find there. Wow. And it was... And we were busy hiking, and we had to find a safe place when the lightning was coming down. And we found a, a cave. Now, a cave is probably not the best place, especially if you're near the entrance, but we found a cave, and we, we found a refuge there. Now, who, who remembers the storm that we had a few, maybe two weeks ago? I think it was on a Wednesday. Uh, I remember it. Okay, you remember it? Now, who of you have animals at home? Okay, dogs? Do you have dogs? Yes. Okay, do your dogs like storms? No. Well, on that... Okay. Okay. Now, there was our dog the other day when it was that storm. He did something that he doesn't normally do. He came running <laughs> and he jumped on the bed. <laughs> he was very, very scared. And he, he, was, he just wanted to be close to, to Galen, my wife. So, yeah, he, he knew he was scared and he had to go somewhere for help. And he chose to, to be close to one of us. So, what are some of the... Yes? Also, I'm reading a book like that with Cave and the Autism Panel. Okay, that's interesting. So, let's tell, when you're in a, a storm... Where are some safe places to go? Can you mention? Okay. A tree house? Mm, no, I don't think a tree house is a good idea. Okay, I'll, I'll give you some, some safe shelters. Your home, that's a good one. Maybe an office, a shopping center, it's probably a good place to go. Um, a, yeah, a mall. A hard-topped vehicle with windows rolled up in, if you're in a car, that's probably quite a good place to go. Um, what are some unsafe places? Where, okay. In the pool, in the treehouse, yes. Outside. Outside, good, like an open field or under a tree. Um, Okay, so there's, depends what type of storm it is. Okay, good. I want, can, Jaden, can you read a verse for me? 
I want to read another verse for you. Or I want Psalm 56, verse 3. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Okay, what did it say? Whenever I'm afraid, I will? Trust in you. Okay, who is you? Me. In, in God. No, we must trust in God when we're afraid. So what does it mean to trust in God? How can we, how do we trust in God? What will, what? So when we trust in God, what would it, pray to him, yes? We believe that he'll look after us, good. And we'll believe what God has said he will do for us. Okay? So we can trust what he has promised us. And in Psalm 46, verse 1, what I'll be sharing on, so please listen to the sermon as well. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So we can trust his promises. We can pray to him. So whenever we are afraid... So whenever we are afraid, we can turn to God and look to Him for help. So will you remember that next time there's a storm? Remember, when we are going through difficult things, we can ask God to help us. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank You for Your love for us. Thank You for all the promises that You have for us in the Bible. And Lord, I thank You that when we are afraid, we can trust in You and we can look to You for help. Pray that you'd help us to apply this lesson in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us pray before we go into the message. Dear Lord, I thank you for the promises that you have for us in the Bible to encourage us and strengthen us. Lord, I pray that that would be our experience as we consider another promise that you have given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So where do you find encouragement when times are tough? Where do you turn to, or who do you turn to for help in times of trouble in your life? I believe many people have found encouragement from Psalm 46, and also from the truths about God that are expressed there in Psalm 46. For example, John Wesley found comfort in Psalm 46, verse 7, which says, the, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Mm. On the night of his death or the day before his death, he was found quoting this and repeating the promises of Psalm 46, verse 7, throughout the night before he passed away. Martin Luther sang this psalm, Psalm 46, in times of trouble and paraphrased it in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress. The first words of that hymn go, A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, our helper he, amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. So many have found encouragement from Psalm 46, and I believe as we also face difficulties and challenges in our own lives, we can also find comfort and encouragement and strength from the truths about God revealed there. So in today's message, I would like us just to look at verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So God desires to be all of this for us. He offers to be our refuge our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. So let, let us look firstly at God as being our refuge. Now, what is a refuge? One dictionary, the Collins Paperback English Dictionary says, says this, it is a shelter or protection as from weather or danger, a place, person, or thing that offers protection help, or relief. So it is my conviction that each of us need a place of refuge, 
a place of shelter and protection when the storms of life hit, and they will hit, and I think they have hit, and, or maybe that's not a word, they have hit. <laughs> We've experienced difficulty. You know, a place of shelter and protection that we can run to, a place of rest and safety, a place of healing. We most definitely feel our need of such a place of refuge when we go through those times of trouble. And I believe as we move towards, let's say, towards the second coming, there's going to be more and more need that we, we internalize the truths and the encouragement found in Psalm 46, that God is our refuge. Now, God is the best refuge that any of us could find. And I would like to share a few pictures that portray God as a refuge in Scripture. The Bible gives us a number of such pictures. For example, God as our fortress, God as our rock, God as our strength, God as our shade, God as our shield, God as our tower. Now, the biblical picture of God that I would like to look at in this sermon, thinking of God as our refuge, is the sheltering wings of a bird. Now, maybe you've seen what it's like when a chicken, a mother hen, calls its chicks. Maybe there's a, a bird of prey flying overhead, and you can see it makes a particular call for the chicks, and the chicks come running, and the chicks find safety under her wings. Now, I think this, this picture can help us as we think of running to God as our place of refuge. Listen to a few verses that speak to us about the shadow of God's wings. So just as a little chick trusts its mother and find refuge, finds refuge in its mother, King David also trusted God and found refuge in God. Listen to his words in Psalm 57, verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Beautiful. Psalm 36, verse 7. How precious is your loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Psalm 63, verse 7 and 8. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. David rejoices that God is a refuge providing God. Again, Psalm 61, verse 1 to 4. <clears throat> Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Over and over, this picture that God, we can find refuge under the shelter and the shadow of God's wings. <clears throat> Psalm 91, verse 2 and 4. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. So over and over, the Bible encourages us to find refuge in God. God wants to be this place of refuge for you and for me. And I invite you to make Him that place of safety, that place of shelter, that place of healing where you can run to. Just as that little chick runs to its mother or our dog runs and jumps onto the bed or 
to find that, that, that comfort and that help, may we run to God to help us. And God will not fail us. He is there to help us. So God is our refuge and strength. God desires not only to be our refuge, but to be our source of strength as well. Listen to Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. I appreciate these words. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Praise God for that. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you feel weak, if you feel that your own strength is failing you, that is okay. God wants to be your source of strength. I'd also like to invite you today to make the Lord the source of your strength, to depend on Him to give you strength to face whatever situation you are facing. As David said in Psalm 27 verse 1, the Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Think of what Paul wrote in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May we find strength in God for the times of trouble that we face. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is the one we can trust in the good times and in the times of trouble. And he wants to be a very present help for us, an ever-present help in those times. We can depend on him to be our helper. God encourages his people in Isaiah 41 verse 10 with these words, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is indeed our source of help. He desires to be that for us. As David said in Psalm 121 verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Who better to have as our helper than God the creator? So I'd like to encourage you to make Jesus your helper. The one who is all powerful, all wise, all loving. The one who wants to be by your side in times of trouble. The one who is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The one who is able to help us in our difficulties. Let me share with you, and this, this truth that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, will be part of the experience, I believe, of God's people before he comes. That I think we can learn the lesson now, we can apply this now in our lives, that when that time comes, when, when great difficulty comes, when things are, are chaotic, we can, we can trust in God to be this for us, and he will come through for us. Let me read from the book, The Great Controversy, just a, a brief paragraph there. After this difficult, difficult experience that God's people will be going through, God will deliver his people. And this is what it says. They have been suddenly delivered from the dark and terrible tyranny of men transformed to demons. Their faces so lately pale anxious and haggard, are now aglow with wonder, faith, 
and love. God has delivered them. Their voices rise in triumphant song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Psalm 46, verse 1 to 3. So in the good times and also the times of trouble that we experience now and whatever is to come that we will face, Jesus is ready to help us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, and to be our special place of refuge. So my message is a simple one, but I invite you to, to make Psalm 46 verse 1 your own, to memorize it, to internalize it, to trust in it, because God wants to be this for us. So may we, along with the psalmist, say, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He will never fail you. Let us trust in him. Amen. Dear Lord, you know each one of us individually, and you care for us very specifically. Lord, you know what each one of us is going through at this time. Lord, you also know the challenges that will be faced in the future. Lord, I thank you that you want to be our refuge, our strength, and our helper. Lord, I pray that we will experience this in a very real and meaningful way now and in time to come. Pray that you would help us to, to know you in these very special ways.